Thursday in Chinese Films Review Reaction. This is Hiroshima After the Bomb, short animated documentary by the channel History Matters. We all know about the first use of atomic weapon in warfare when the USA employed one of the city of Hiroshima at the end of the World War II. Yet, what was life like in the city in the hours, days, and week afterwards? Find out by watching this. Yeah. I saw the Kazakhstan video basically, and I'm pretty sure Nick Halloran. Yeah, basically, but there there are way too many Kazakhstan video that I watched about uh, nukes and how their effect works, right? Like what happens when you drop a nuke, how things progress from there, and it's really fucking uncomfortable when you. I'm a I'm a really visualizing type of person. When I see something in my head, I start to visualize things, start to imagine things, right? So it's really difficult to watch that. But yeah, one thing's for damn sure. That uh, th- this is really fucked up event all around, right? Because uh, first of all, the explosion would be so fucking loud that anybody who can probably see the explosion, right, is gonna be uh, you know deaf or something, or you know have some real eardrum damage, right? And if you can see the mushroom cloud basically in your city, that means you are going to be fucked. Even if you survive, you're gonna have complications later on. Nukes are really fucked up all around, but yeah, this is a really interesting topic because everybody talks about uh, the you know uh, bombs and historical events like why was bomb dropped? Was it necessary? Was it ethical? This and that, you know, uh, would have would have USA won the war directly without uh, you know dropping the bombs or the Japanese would have fought to the death? And there is real discussion about all this, but nobody really talks about like what really happened after that. And I know that you know there are scientific uh, you know discoveries that people realize that after uh, you drop the bomb, the heat and you know the basically radius and things are so intense that even your shadows basically gets planted in places. So the aftermath has this kind of a shadowy figures you know uh, placed all around the place, right? I mean that's just fucked up. You, I mean that's some next level shit. People say that they can put their you know face. Uh, you know, hand in front of face, but yet still can see the bright lights through your hand. That's how hard it is. I don't know how that works, but that's just fucked up. So let's go this one. Remember, we'll flag Merrickson. Don't forget to like, subscribe. So I know you stop with us to more. Check out the Rick Sunday. There's a link in the season. And yeah, let's do it. We all know how the Second World War ended with the decision to drop the atomic bomb on Hiroshima on August the 6th, as well as on Nagasaki on August the 9th. Whilst much is known about the decision to drop the bomb on Hiroshima, not a great deal is said about the conditions in the city in the immediate aftermath of the bombing. The bomb was dropped at 8.15 in the morning. About 70,000 people were killed near instantly, with about 10,000 more dying after fire swept through the city. So in the wake of the atomic bombing, the central Japanese government didn't know what had happened. The US Air Force had been conducting bombing runs over Japan continuously for months by this point, and the alarm wasn't really sounded until the army garrison at Hiroshima stopped reporting in. After many hours of not being able to get a response, army chiefs opted to send a recon plane to see what had happened. The recon pilot saw the mushroom cloud from over 100 miles away, but before he could return to Tokyo to say what had happened, President Truman had announced the bombing to the world. Unsurprisingly, the Japanese government was completely unprepared for this event, and early rescue efforts were poor. In fact, the first people the government sent there were atomic scientists to determine whether or not the Americans were lying. So, the humanitarian response in the city was pretty awful, and the reason why was that the death toll included many of the city. I they send scientists to see whether Americans are lying or not. Nothing does this kind of devastation apart from nukes. When they got there, like holy, I mean, I'm pretty sure scientists didn't even much conduct. I mean, yeah, obviously they probably have some protocols that they checked. For the radius or something, but they saw the fucking you know massive damage where the nuke dropped and aftermath you know for a long long distance, right? Where things uh, people are slowly dying, burned out buildings in the center of it, everything just atomized. I mean they would have like yeah this is definitely nuke. City's high-ranking officials as well as medical and military personnel. That and the fact that the building where rescue efforts were supposed to be coordinated from no longer existed. Most of the city's civilian survivors fled to the surrounding countryside where infrastructure and the availability of food and medical supplies was extremely poor. Perhaps the most famous man to flee the city was Tsutomu Yamaguchi who, after suffering serious burns, decided to seek safety in his hometown of Nagasaki. He survived oh, oh. both atomic bombings. Oh, Hiroshima is. and relief efforts there were plagued Oh, the businessman, right? 
he went to hiroshima first and barely evaded i guess uh, the nuke then went to nagasaki from there even there barely evaded another nuke i mean imagine the mentality of that guy right holy shit two nukes dropped and i was just there at this just a nick of time i could have died very easily supply issues there was little drinking water, food was sometimes scarce, and it took many weeks for medical professionals to arrive en masse. In fact, in the two hours after the blast, the Red Cross Hospital, the largest one to survive the blast, had over 10,000 people visit. It had a capacity of 600. The man who led relief efforts within the city was a man called Shinzo Hamai, who basically worked for weeks straight attempting to fix infrastructure and save as many people as possible. His initial efforts were undermined by the fact that relief was organised through the Japanese army, and given that they intended to keep fighting the war, supplies and potential relief workers were directed elsewhere. And also, in case you're wondering, the radiation dissipated very quickly, barring a few areas of the city and so it wasn't lethal to stay there. The city remained in its bleak state for about two months, when after the Japanese surrender, the city was occupied by the American military and aid became much more readily available. You should also know that the Americans pursued a policy of heavy press censorship concerning the after effects of the bombings, and thus many in Japan were unaware of how bad things were in Hiroshima. So people didn't really start to return to Hiroshima for a couple of years and most settled in the outskirts of the city. In 1947, Hamai became Hiroshima's first democratically elected mayor and he tried to work with the American occupying forces to improve relations. The Japanese didn't start the process of rebuilding the city proper until 1949 and it would be many more years until the city recovered to its pre-war population. Hiroshima and its people had endured unimaginable tragedy and remembering the stories of men like Hamai and Yamaguchi are important when looking at the atomic bombings. I hope you enjoyed this episode and a special thanks to all my Patreon supporters, James Bizanet, Marvin Kassau, Filda Oink Oink, Rashid. Yeah, holy shit. I mean, uh, this is really fucked up to watch right now because all the events that are progressing in the world, right? Where certain countries are basically saying that we are going to join NATO. At the same time, basically other country is getting more, you know, uneasy, like uh, there's going to be repercussions. I mean, look, whenever somebody says, like, holy shit, this is slowly going to turn into World War Three. holy shit, something bad is coming, people are like, just chill out, man, just, you know, let's not panic too much. But th that's the thing, it's like Russian roulette, we don't know, right? We don't know how things are going to escalate, because it's just one simple decision and things can turn ugly like this. And this is like the first bomb, right? The first uh, version of the nuclear war. Now the nukes are really fucked up. Right, really powerful. It depends on. I mean, obviously there are compact ones, but there are the large ones are really fucked up, right? Compared to this one. And uh, the awful thing about wars like this is when some bad event happen, right? Like this, people always uh, shrug all the you know real news down just to keep the morale up of everybody else around the world. So you don't even get real news. Like how fucked up it actually is where some impact like this happened but yeah and all the innocent people basically i mean people in power want to fight right i mean military po military people just want to fight the generals and shit like that common people just like what the fuck are you doing just relax and those other people get nuked i mean you don't even get any warning that's it boom let's just this is just horrible I mean, people think that, uh, pe whenever people think about the world wars and massive wars, they just, they, they just hear about when it truly, you know, reached this peak, right? When it really felt like, oh, everybody's just fighting now. And they just think that's how the war starts. But no, when you really go into detail, like how war starts, it starts really slow. It takes times, like weeks, even sometimes months to really progress into really, uh, you know, all out massive war. So people think the current events, like they are the way this, you know, going right now, that, that these are slow, right? I mean, if if it's going to be a massive war or going to escalate, it would have done by now. Not really, right? It might take months before everybody joins in. It becomes a massive scale war, or not even that before tragedy like this happens. So we are living in really fucked up times. Uh, three, four months ago, right? The world was completely different than today. Whenever somebody says like, "Oh, chill out, snowflake," it's not. But yeah, it is. It is that. Few months ago, nobody would have thought like nobody would have the balls to really, you know, uh, go to war with somebody in the today's world with all the nukes and shit. Apparently not, right? Apparently that whole thing, that whole image is gone out of the window, 
right? God knows how many wars are going to come in the future just because that wall is broken now. That nobody's going to do the war because they're nukes. Apparently, that's not the case. Right, people, that was Hiroshima after the bomb by the channel History Matters. If you like Merrickson, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the big Sunday. There's a link in the description. And yeah, I guess I'll see you next time.